Well, a new bioenergy center in Oklahoma hopes to make native prairie grass into gas. Joining me now from the site of the new research laboratory is our Brian Vandalee. This slab of concrete directly behind me could very well be the future of biofuels. We were there as Oklahoma State University held the groundbreaking for a 3,000 square foot, $1.2 million bioenergy laboratory. Bioenergy, as I think most of you here know, certainly holds tremendous promise for our nation and for our great state. Governor Brad Henry was just one of many who attended the groundbreaking of the OSU Bioenergy Lab. The lab is the starting ground for the state's bioenergy center, a concept collaborating the state's top scientists. The great scientists here at OSU and at OU and at the Samuel Roberts Noble Foundation in Ardmore with the, the various expertise at, at each of these locations and the collaboration between these great scientists, Oklahoma can and will, I think, lead the nation. A must starting point as Congress passed legislation for 36 billion gallons of biofuels by 2022. The Dean of Agricultural Programs at OSU, Bob Whitson, says this lab will serve as a milestone. It's a historic occasion for us. We have all the major players in Oklahoma that are with us that have the vision, the leadership for the development and implementation of this biofuels industry for our great state. The lab will have a major focus on cellulosic ethanol developed from switchgrass. This process is unique from conventional starch-based ethanol in that it uses the entire plant, not just the seed. Uh, some of the uh, national reports and so on indicate biomass, biofuels out of cellulose is, is offers a lot of growth opportunity for uh, producing uh, cellulose kinds of crops that can be converted to, to ethanol. And as switchgrass is native to Oklahoma and can grow in unconventional areas, it ultimately gives the state another crop that can be used in rotation with current farming operations. OSU President Burns Hargis. It's a win-win because that crop can be converted into uh, domestically uh, produced fuel. So it's, it's, really, a, uh, it's really leveraging uh, both sides of, uh, of the equation. Essentially staying away from using food crops like corn for fuel while giving producers an alternative income. Yet it is the independence this crop could offer that is most appealing. Anything that can be produced uh, right here in this country is, is so important uh, to the future of our country. Well, as you can see, it is still just a slab of concrete, but OSU officials are touting this as an investment on the nation's energy independence. Well, Brian, you've been reporting on this for quite some time. Are we any closer to seeing this technology come to fruition? Well, hopefully soon. This 3,000 square foot facility should allow for larger production models before they were working on scale models. Now they can collect data and see what the process is like at a full scale. Thank you, Brian. Thank you.